What's up, guys? Welcome to the Duntown Show. I'm your host, Tim. This is episode one, and let's get right into it. What's up, guys? Welcome into the uh, podcast here. Uh, I want to start off by saying uh, I appreciate you guys taking out some time to listen to me today. I'm Tim. I'm the owner of Outcast Services, and uh, we're going to get right into it. This is our first episode. And uh, we're going to cover a few different things here. I'm just going to get you guys started off by telling you a little bit about myself. Um, I started off, you know, my journey in life after high school, getting into woodworking, a little bit into uh, uh, retail, and then uh, dove into construction pretty heavily. Uh, Did that for most of my uh, young adult life, you know, coming up. It was pretty much construction, working with my dad, working for Pipeline. Um... Southern California Edison and uh, from there I just you know always knew I want to do my own thing and and kind of got into classic cars a little bit working on my own projects nothing real crazy and uh, bought a welder got into you know just trailer repair and that type of stuff which led us to here to outcast today and uh, I I've really really enjoyed it um, it it's been a, a fucking journey that's for for no Nothing to take for granted is is how hard it has been to get here and looking back just realizing the steps and the uh, things I had to do to get to this point. So you guys can check me out um, beyond the podcast here on Outcast Services on YouTube and then Outcast Services LLC on Instagram guys and um, you know I wouldn't really call myself like a, a car builder or no type of master car you know, restore or anything like that. I like to modify vehicles. I happen to like to do the pre-smog era, you know, 75 and older, you know, they're more enjoyable for me to work on. That's kind of the era I like to focus on. Um, But like the project I have right now is a 78 K5 Blazer. And uh, you can see some of the videos that we have out right now on the YouTube here on, um, Outcast. So the 78 K5 Blazer is it's a unique vehicle, man. I had never worked on something that big. I mean, it's a big box of a truck and you know, we took it in as a, a mild motor swap and went ahead and pulled the body off of it and uh we were able to Restore the chassis and do a fresh coat of paint and put all new suspension and stuff on it that you will see in the videos on Outcast if you go check us out. And um, you know, besides working on cars, we do we do other things too. The YouTube channel is going to be basically a lot of the stuff I do here in the shop, which I do out of my home. We're not a, a open to the public walk-in type of shop. Um, it's by appointment only, and you can get a hold of me on. Uh, Instagram or even message me through uh, YouTube and uh, I'll have my number and stuff on there so you guys can get a hold of me but we also do other things you know I love to do welding I can go out we can do mobile welding fence repair Um, uh, let's see we do uh, some steel work as far as uh, structural work you know we're not going out on big certified jobs or nothing crazy like that just you know, run of the mill work. And uh, we've had some good success with that. And I've got a lot of people in all industries that do, you know, paving and concrete and all the different construction stuff from interior remodeling, all that. I have friends that do all that type of stuff. So, you know, getting a hold of anybody that does those types of things is not an issue at all, by no means. And uh, we'll talk to some of these people on here. Um, this podcast. Um, in a nutshell guys besides just how I got started and what it is It's not going to just be about what I have going on in the shop You know occasionally we'll have some guests on the show that do different things and kind of pick their brain and have some fun with the guests You know, I, I just want to have a little bit of a platform somewhere We can talk and have a few of the buddies in and their friends and family come on and just talk about whether it's Car related, hot rod related, newer vehicle related. Uh, maybe they do, you know, vehicle wraps, or maybe uh, they work in the construction industry, but you know, their hobbies include some of this stuff. It doesn't really matter. That'll be a, a real interesting um, 
aspect to take on for the podcast. I, I'm excited about that. We're also going to do um, some work coming up with another shop. And I'm going to try to do some filming if I can. And I'll definitely be posting pictures and stuff on Instagram. And these guys build monster trucks, man. I'm talking the big one-ton style um, Chevy trucks. Like, say, for instance, the Blazer we're building. I mean, they're completely cutting the suspension off and putting in one-ton front and rear axles with the big four-link and the oversized uh, um, coilovers and 44-inch subwoofer. Or uh, subwoofers. Damn, that'd be a big speaker. Um, super swamper tires, you know, and the oversized uh, axles with lockers. And I mean, it, it's badass, but they have asked me if I could maybe come down and help them out weld. So I'm excited to get down there and help them out with that. Um, it, it's very uh, motivating to get um, further and further involved in the industry I'm in right now. The more people I meet in it because it's something I'm so interested in. I mean, I literally, it's not a stare at the clock kind of a job anymore. I'm just out doing what I can do. If I'm here in the shop grinding out a project, great. But if I'm out and about, whether I'm mobile welding or I'm out, you know, doing, doing whatever it is, it, it's still that same satisfaction because I'm doing it for myself, doing it for my family and just trying to make a good name for myself at Outcast and, uh, the whole YouTube way I go about it um, is not very educational, I wouldn't say, but I try to explain what I'm doing. I don't try to get too off topic. Um, I try to keep the videos related to that build and separate each build accordingly so that I'm not just rambling all over the place. Well, you know, guys, we're working on this and then let's go over here and spend 30 minutes of the blazer video talking about a trailer. Like I'm trying to keep them very organized and something that you guys will like to watch. So hopefully that does work out. Um, we're getting a few subscribers. We're up to 166 guys. I don't think that's a lot, but I think it's pretty cool. There's 166 subscribers. So someone's watching it and, um, I think you guys will enjoy it. It's fun. I try to throw a little bit of fun stuff in there. I think this podcast is going to be a lot of the lighter side. You know, getting through this intro and a little bit about myself is probably going to be the more difficult thing for me. But once we move past this and I get to talk about you guys or talk about sports or talk about, you know, the MGA, the golf tour, you know, that we're on and, and stuff like that, it'll be a lot more fun. So, uh, Moving on, uh, we'll talk more about what Outcast does, but like I said, we're basically a fabrication and car modification shop. You know, we do a little bit of everything, electrical. I don't do a lot of body work and interior. I just don't have the time or the tools set up for that, but um, down the line, I would definitely like to. We're looking into getting into possibly a roll door shop. Um, it'd be nice sooner than later, but you know, if it could happen by the end of this year or possibly get in where, uh, the neighbor across the street shop is, there may be possibly a little spot we can fit in down there, which would be cool. Cause then we could just help each other out and run our own businesses just at the same location, which would be really fun. Um, good guys over there. And, um, I'll put more information about them. And like I said, I'll post up pictures and stuff when I'm down there, dude, cause it's some really, really cool work that they do some big giant trucks big motors i mean all the shit we love um yeah so it's not my videos again real quick on youtube they're educational uh they're truthful if i get parts that suck i'm gonna tell you if i have fittings that don't fit right i'm gonna tell you if i have to go and do all kinds of extra grinding and removing paint and doing all this stuff to get some of these parts to fit I'll tell you because whether it's from Holly or Fitech or you know wherever you're getting it from believe me they all have their issues I've had countless phone calls and had to have parts shipped back and forth just to get things right it can be a nightmare building on these vehicles um, or building these vehicles working on them you know so I try to bring all that and I like to take advice from uh, people that leave comments or people that I talk to and network with that obviously have a lot more experience in this field than I do. And I will incorporate that into my routine and into what I do when I'm working on a vehicle, how I, how I take notes. And you'll even see in the videos, I'll come back in a video and be like, hey, you know what? 
I totally forgot about this whole portion right here, guys. I checked my notes and I'm gonna show you where I messed up and what we could have did different and so on. So um, when I do have a guest on, um, we'll have, uh, you know, talk about their trade, their hobbies, um, what their life's like now, you know, maybe where they came from a little bit and what their future looks like. And, and of course, if they're in, into any type of hot rods or cars or anything or you know did their parents or the people that raised them have a classic car you know any type of classic car memory would be fun to talk about and just go down that road we'll have a little outline for uh, each guest and as, as they come in to uh, me knowing them ahead of time or or just having a little idea of who they are is how I'll, I'll typically shape that episode and then if we're not we're going to be doing solo shows with me where we're going to be doing uh, sports talk, shop talk, YouTube review, and what's happening on the golf course because we are part of the MGA, like I mentioned, and we'll go further into that uh, later on in today's episode, guys. So, um, The future for the Blazer project right now in the shop is just to get it running and pretty much get it a complete vehicle, finishing all the brake lines, finishing uh, the fuel system, which is 90% brake lines uh, with brake boosters probably at about 70%. Then we have to do all the electrical and wiring harness for that. Um, we're going with the Holly Terminator X system to get the engine up and running, which should be a phenomenal system from what I'm hearing. Um, should be really good. Let me make sure we're still on here. There we go. Um, should be a really good system and uh, should be pretty painless. You pretty much type in the mods you have, um, you hook everything up, you tell them what you've deleted and what you're still running, and it kind of gives you a somewhat of a program, a startup program for the engine to actually uh, take off and start running. So you can do tuning and stuff from there, which is amazing. It's not a cheap system, but honestly, this truck has been built with some really top quality parts. Um, from everything we've done to the motor, everything we've done, you know, with the chassis as far as just the time we took to clean it up. I mean, it's not a A1 restoration. Like I've seen some of the stuff that's being called A1 restoration out in Barrett Jackson. I know some of the guys have posted videos of that and man, it's terrible. I mean, the chassis have a shitload of undercoat, which is extremely hard to get off if you didn't sandblast the chassis, which we didn't sandblast ours. And so I know for a fact there's still some spots that we couldn't get to. But again, this level of restoration that we're uh, trying to accomplish is still above and beyond because it is a truck that's going to be going out into the dirt and the mud and that type of stuff. So at the end of the day, it's, it's still a really, really solid build. And we used a you know, our HVLP gun and shot black gloss paint with the hardener in it. So it's going to be a nice chassis paint. Full Deaver springs on this. It's got brand new gears in the front and rear axles. It's getting brand new drive shafts. Um, it has the NP205 uh, transfer case. And uh, obviously an LS60 with the 4L80 tra uh, 4L80E transmission. And that's fully rebuilt motor and trans. I built the motor, got the transmission rebuilt, and it's a brand new NP205 transfer case. So all that information is in our videos on YouTube, guys. Please go check it out. Um, Man, uh, the first episode that we <laughs> released was basically getting you all caught up with a lot of that stuff. And it was just the chassis with the drivetrain um, sitting in there. And then the next video was nuts because part two, man, we go to put the body on. Partner Mike's in the video with us helping us out. Uh, that's my dad, actually. And he, uh, we, we, got, we got down, man. That thing, we had it all the way up in the air. I think it had to be like 42 inches from the lowest point of the body in order to get the chassis to go under there uh, with the drivetrain and everything and for it to sit down into the new body mounts. And I mean, I tell you what, it was a mission. And then they sent us the wrong body mounts at first from LMC truck. That was unfortunate. So we had to reorder and, and you know, that was a cost to me because uh, I didn't check them in time because we had ordered them so uh, far back that by the time I checked them, there was just no returning them. So we didn't even bother. We just ordered another set. Um, so we got the body back on it was it was crazy but it worked out you know check out the video um, and then we're starting part three four and five is just completing out the engine and getting it all back together so that we can eventually get to part 
uh, seven, eight, whatever it is, where it's actually a running truck again, guys, for the first time in like three years. So that'll be a big, big moment. Uh, putting the body back on was a huge accomplishment for us. So I'm excited for you guys to check that out. Um, uh, lastly, uh, we're doing the brake booster and that type of thing. And that'll be uh, where our YouTube video is being filmed right now. That's currently what we're working on is the completion of the brake booster master cylinder and uh, brake line kit so we can get that finished up that's a headache a lot of people don't even like dealing with the brake system at all i understand why and it's hard to adapt brand new lines that come pre-bent in a box and what do you get they're not bent properly or they were for a pickup or whatever the case is so uh, moving on from that guys that's gonna pretty much be the intro and who I am so you can tell I'm into this car thing that's what I do I like to do YouTube videos I love my Instagram account I like putting stuff out on there uh, you know making cool reels sometimes I post some barbecue action or whatever but um, we're gonna move on from talking about me for right now because that's not really the goal here but now you know a little bit about me so we're moving on if you don't know me you do now brother um, who's excited for the Super Bowl that's coming up? Because I know I am. I'm excited and I'm sad at the same time, dude, because I hate when football season is over. I mean, uh, let me stand up here because this is going to get me really excited. Um, I hate when football season's over. It, it sucks. You know what I'm saying? It's like we wait so long to get to football season and then, bam, it's gone that fast, dude. But... With that being said, it is the Kansas City Chiefs, it is Patrick Mahomes, it is Brock Purdy and the 49ers. Um, what are your guys' prediction? Who's going to win it? You know, we've still got a little bit of time before the game's played, so hopefully this will have aired and you guys will have seen it and we can talk about it. Um, uh, let's see, what do I have laid out here for you guys? Mahomes over Tom Brady. So what's that going to be like? Um, is Tom Brady going to remain the all-time GOAT here, guys? Or is Pat Mahomes going to take over? You know, if Patrick Mahomes takes this one, guys, he already has two Super Bowl uh, championships. He has two Super Bowl MVPs. And then if he gets this one, that'll make three in only six years. Where what uh, uh, Tom Brady had about a 20-year career and he had seven Super Bowls, five Super Bowl MVPs, uh, three regular season MVPs. I mean, it, it's pretty astounding or astonishing, if you will, that Patrick Mahomes is on his way in such a short amount of time. I personally think he's going to blow well past Tom Brady, and I think he's going to do it in a lot uh, shorter time period, maybe in like 16 years he'll be he'll be already surpassing um, I mean if he keeps this up the question I have right now though is uh, is Kelsey gonna retire you know I kind of feel like when Tyreek Hill left you know that that was a huge weapon that they could have used and now if Kelsey retires especially with the Super Bowl win and and gonna get you know with Taylor Swift and all that are they gonna go their own separate way or are we gonna continue to see that matchup next season or does it matter if they win or lose that's what i want to know you know i'm always real curious to know if this is kelsey's last year i guess we'll know soon enough because if they win he's probably gonna you know announce it within i'd say a couple of months and if they lose he might hold out a little longer and wait and see i don't know i don't know him personally obviously so we'll see what he comes up with guys but i also do think that there's a possibility that uh, Andy Reid retires. Now, if Andy Reid retires, that could be a, a game changer also for the whole situation because now you're looking at possibly losing uh, Kelsey. We don't know who else is going to stay. You know, they got uh, Pacheco, Clyde Edwards Sinclair, um, uh, Rice. They got Marquez Scantley. They've got all these guys that seem to be playing well and seem to be pretty healthy, but are they going to be around next year? And if Andy Reid leaves, you know, how much does the Kansas City dynamic change? We don't know. We'll have to wait and see, but it's very interesting. But I don't think it's going to change Patrick Mahomes much as a person. 
as a player. I think he'll still continue to find a way to win. We've seen Tom Brady do it. You know, he did it with a, 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 a nice squad at times and then at, at times when his squad wasn't all there. And uh, on the 49ers side of the ball, you know, you got a huge squad there. You know, you've got a young quarterback. Uh, what's Purdy got? He's got a 2023 uh, passer rating leader. And he's going to the Pro Bowl. I think he had a Pro Bowl last year, right? And I believe he's going to the Pro Bowl this year. And he's going to the Super Bowl. So not a bad start for a season and a half. Not a bad start. Um, there's a lot of ups and downs about Brock Purdy. I'm going to remain neutral. I think he's a good quarterback. He's got him to the Super Bowl. But, you know, he does have uh, C-Mac around him and George Kittle. You know, he's had Debo Samuel, who's been relatively healthy throughout most of the year. Um, Brandon Nayuk, phenomenal player. I love that guy. Um, Kyle Juszczyk stepping up to the plate lately. More and more. He's there if you need him. Uh, the thing is that I noticed, too, is... Uh, on uh, defense for Kansas City, uh, something Purdy's going to have to deal with is uh, Nick Bolton, Sneed, and uh, Tran Tranquil. Guy, I can never say that guy's uh, name correctly, but Nick Bolton and Tranquil, the linebackers, are going to be they're going to be trying to bring the pressure on Purdy. I know for a fact because if they do, that's going to cause him to scramble, and he's more of a pocket quarterback in my opinion. I, he likes to sit there in the quarterback. Boom, go through his checkdowns, and then boom, zing you one. He likes to send it in there. And if he can get it to them guys, great. You know, Kittle, he'll he'll battle for you all day long. That's, that's one thing that's going to be awesome is getting to see Kelsey on one side of the ball. And then when it's the 49ers ball, you got Kittle. And I know those guys are buddies. So it's going to be a great, it's going to be a great Super Bowl. Um... But on the defense for the 49ers with something that Kansas City is going to have to look out for and something that I hope I see is I want to see Kansas City, I, I mean Patrick Mahomes get, get sacked, okay? I want to see him get sacked. I want Bosa or one of these guys, Chase Young, to just tear him apart. You got Fred Warner's going to be batting balls and tearing you up all day long. And then you got Greenlaw. I'm excited for this, man. I am excited. These are pro bowlers, all pro teams. These are two great teams going to the Super Bowl. It's getting a little Kansas City heavy every year. But I tell you what, if, if Josh Allen can't knock them off and, and Lamar can't knock them off, I, I, you know, I don't really know who's, who's next in line. Joe Burrow, you know, he had a tough season. He was injured and, and didn't play all that well and then was hurt and their team still continued to do well, but he just didn't have the energy. So we'll see next year. Maybe that'll be a long enough stint for him to come back and come back harder. But, you know, your boy Patrick Mahomes right now looks really, really healthy. Um, personally, I, I, I have no qualms about it. Um, one thing is really interesting is the next year's uh, coaching lineup that has changed lately I mean it is bizarre guys I I couldn't even tell you all the guys that got fired but I can sure uh, surely tell you here all the guys that have been hired some of the new coaches we're going to see next year guys and Jim Harbaugh with the Chargers is absolutely great I think that's going to be a ton of fun he was saying that when he met Justin Herbert and I think uh, Keenan Allen, that he was a little starstruck. So it was funny to hear the coach, you know, still get that that rush to meet these players and know that he's going to be coaching some really good guys. I've always liked the Chargers. So um, I think it'd be real cool if they could do good this next season. I, I think it'd be a lot of fun being right here in L.A., go down to SoFi Stadium, check them out. Um, I'm a Saints fan, so, you know, really we, we either play once every other year or something, you know, not that often, not enough to make it a big rivalry, not like we are with the Rams. I feel more of a rivalry with the Rams than I do with um, the Chargers. But, um, so yeah, the Jim Harbaugh show next year. I'm excited. And then Dan Quinn, dude, he leaves Dallas. Uh, he's the newest one. He's headed over to the Commanders. That, that to me, is going to be great for the Commanders, I think. I don't think Dallas, uh, shit, they shouldn't have got rid of him. I think he was great over there at Dallas. But, hey, if you get offered a head coaching job, I guess you got to take it. 
And then uh, the Titans hire uh, Brian Callahan, I believe it is, or something. I don't even know the guy. Couldn't tell you. The Panthers, Dave Canals. I don't have any idea who that is. Didn't even bother researching him. He's going to just prove it to me on the field. Especially the Panthers are in our division. So, you know, I, I'm anxious to see what kind of, what he can do with, uh, was it Bryce Young down there? See what they can do. But um, moving on, Antonio Pierce, man, he takes the job with the Raiders, and that looks like a good team builder, a good morale builder. The Falcons also in our division. Another uh, Raheem Morris is going to be their coach, guys. Raheem Morris to the Falcons as head coach. Uh, Seahawks are going to get Mike McDonald. And the Patriots, uh, Gerard Mayo. So let's see what Gerard Mayo can do. Uh, played with the Patriots. Obviously, they love him down there. So he looks like he's going to be a good fit. We'll see. And then does Kansas City really lose Andy Reid? Does Bill Belichick come back next year as the Kansas City head coach? I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. That'd be pretty cool, though. You know, I wouldn't mind seeing that. I kind of hope we do see Belichick again. I like the... Come on. On to Cincinnati. You know, he doesn't say shit. He don't say shit. It, it's funny to me. I, I love it. I love it. So, moving along, guys. That's pretty much my uh, look into the Super Bowl. It's going to be a really good game. Um, as of right now, I, I'm not going to just flat out say, oh, I want the 49ers to, to win and they're going to win easily. I do want the 49ers to win this game, but I want it to be a really good game. I'm actually predicting overtime. Um, I think both of these teams have a, a good enough defense because if you can get Purdy to scramble around and, and he starts throwing the ball a little bit, you have an opportunity to pick him there where it's harder to get Kansas City on the ground, but I think the 49ers have the defense that can do it. And if they can get uh, my homeboy on the ground a couple of times, I think it's a done deal. You'll start to shake him up. And, you know, if that causes any sideline irritation or anything like that, that could be it. There's going to be a lot of pressure on Kansas City because they've got Taylor Swift and all these people's uh, posse's running up and down in Vegas and you can only imagine the show that that's going to be on I, I can't even imagine um, so look out for that guys because I'm sure it's going to be it's going to be Taylor Swift show if she makes it back from Japan in time to be to the Super Bowl I know you guys are excited about it Okay, Pro Bowl, who's watching the Pro Bowl it's not like it used to be but uh, this Thursday I believe it is at 7 p.m., 8.30 p.m. Eastern is the Skills Challenge. And that's the one where they're just kind of in like a, it looks like a practice dome. And they're just whoop, whoop, whoop. They're going through it. It's down in Florida. So they're just going through that. And they're uh, doing the Skills Challenge. You know, like who can, is Derek Carr going to land it? Bam, baby. In the net, in the net, in the net. What happened to that all year? I like Derek Carr, dude. I do. He seems like a good guy, but god damn, dude. I'm ready for a, a rookie quarterback in New Orleans. But anyhow, that's Thursday. Um, Thursday at 7 p.m., guys. And then if you want to watch the Pro Bowl itself, Sunday, 3 p.m., 6 p.m. Eastern in Orlando. That's, you know, there you go. AFC versus NFC. Check it out. I'm not sure exactly what's going to go on, what they have planned for them this year, if they're doing, you know, the long drive challenge or if they're doing the, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to bash on it, but it ain't what it used to be. And uh, shout out to all the guys that make it into the Pro Bowl every year, though. I know it's still like a stat that, you know, guys, they get the pat on the back. Hey, you, it's another notch in your belt. You're going to the Pro Bowl. Good for you. That's pretty cool. I mean, I think it's cool. Um, now we're going to move on a little bit, guys, to the next board. And uh, we're only going to cover NFL and NBA. And then when the NFL drops off, we're not going to even really talk, obviously, much because they won't be playing other than breaking news and stuff we might hear. And then um, as it gets closer, we'll start amping more back up about that. And we'll keep it real shop-related. Once we're caught up on the stuff in the shop every uh 
episode, then I'll move into some other topics and have some cool stuff to talk about uh, when we don't have a guest on. And we are uh, lining up our first couple guests right now, so that'll be fun. Talk to them about different stuff, like I said, where they're from, what they do, and what their future's like. So stay tuned for that. I'm excited to get the first person on because the interaction will be a lot more fun. It'll uh, stretch the episode. It'll let the episode breathe a little bit. You know, me, I'm trying to keep this moving for you guys while keeping it entertaining and, and somewhat, you know, uh, on point. So with that being said, sticking to the sports world, we're going to go with uh, the Los Angeles Lakers. I love the Lakers. I do. Um, I've really, really got more and more into the Lakers in 2018, the Alonzo Ball era. I just you know didn't really have a set team because I just liked watching basketball and then it you know my buddies are all Lakers fan I'm here in LA and I said you know what it's time dude and I, I took that that oath but the thing is we sucked so it was fine no one was saying oh yeah mm -hmm, Lakers huh duh nah we weren't winning championships we weren't doing nothing like that but you know to this point it's like we won the NBA championship in the COVID thing, the bubble, which was great. You know, we went in, we dominated, we did what we had to do, we won. But then that has a stigma around it. And then since then, we've now won the in-season tournament. Oh, first one ever, LeBron MVP of the in-season tournament. The, you know, AD scores 100 points or whatever. You know what I'm saying? That's dramatic, by the way. Not 100 points. But you know what I'm saying? And it's like, what the hell happened to that the rest of the year? So now we have another, like, championship type thing that's like, you know, when are we going to get a solid, a solid NBA championship with the full crowd winning it away? Whoever we're playing the game seven in their stadium you know in their arena boom we take them out that's what i want you know it's like i don't know man as a fan you you go through so much as as these sports fans and stuff and it's like whatever we deal with it but man when you see the potential right there and like we went to the in season tournament we dominated walked right in and just smacked all those teams around boom got it everybody was cheering and happy and then after that it was like time for cancun bro Time to go to Cancun. We're done with the rest of the teams. were like, to be honest, yeah, okay, we put out an effort. It would have been cool to win that in-season tournament. But in reality, like, all right, we treated those games like games that are trying to get us to the, the end of this season, not this in-season tournament. So that's that's where the, the downfall is. And that's where a little bit of this Lakers, L.A., Bright Lights, the whole – history of everybody that's been involved with the Lakers gets a little bit out of hand sometimes as a fan because it's like, damn, we have all this pressure on us. It's like, I can't even imagine being a Dallas Cowboy fan. I can't even imagine being a Dallas Cowboy fan. You can't get away from it. If, if, if they're winning, the haters are out all over TV, every channel. If they're losing, the entire world, including the fans, hate that. Like, that's just a whole crazy group down there. But um, it's the Lakers have that same sometimes feeling, man, where it's like we know what we're capable. We have all these championships. Yeah, we've won more recently and we're more current and we have, you know, you know, bigger stars than maybe the Cowboys as an example. But it's the same feeling when you have all that talent and you have the, the everything you need, all the lights, all everything you need. Every year you should feel like, hey, we got to go win this because we're L.A. No, they get this relaxed Oh, I got the Laker jersey on now. You know, I was balling when I played in Portland. I was balling when I played in wherever. But then you come to L.A. and you put the purple and gold on. And it's like you're on cruise control. Or you just expect greatness to just happen. I don't know. It's frustrating. We're 24 and 25. We're under 500 right now. And tonight, um, if you're listening today, it's Wednesday. The Lakers are playing tonight versus Boston and Boston's like up there as one of the best teams right now guys you know this they're a great team and dude they're a badass rivalry and what's Anthony Davis and LeBron James are both sitting out tonight um, supposedly due to injury I know uh, LeBron James is dealing with the left ankle 
and um, AD has some long word into injury and a hip spasms. You know what I'm saying? So it okay, okay, but you know, is it a stand against something? Like, are they disappointed, or are they trying to be like, hey, you know what? I'm a little tired. My ankle's a little sore. Let the young squad get out there and go go do their thing. You know, LeBron. And AD are both averaging 24.9, so 25 points a game. You know, D'Lo doing okay at 17. But, you know, I've seen him so many games where he's dropping. The other night, we're watching the Lakers, and D'Lo's dropping three-pointers, but the the breaking whatever halftime's bragging about how Curry had like five threes or something in the first half, but then had none the rest of the game, and D'Lo was just, just dunking them. Three, three, three. Two different channels, two different games, but that was kind of the thing. But it's because he's not staying um, consistent as long as uh, Curry is. You know, this D'Angelo Russell has the ability, he has the skill and all this, but then now he has like this trade rumor funk in his head but he's averaging 17 points austin reeves averaging 15 points rui hachimura 11.4 points you know i mean these guys all need to kind of step it up if we could all get to about 18 plus points averaging and then have a few games where you're uh, scoring harder and higher than that and step up the defense a little bit you know austin reeves plays hard he's up and down the court you know, sweating his ass off, hair's flying everywhere, shooting the ball, he's getting rebounds, he's doing all that, but at some point he's only one guy and there's some nights where he just doesn't do it, you know? And I'm not bashing on none of these guys because I, I can't dribble a basketball between my legs without falling and, you know, I get it. I'm not trying to be a hater or nothing. I'm just, as a fan, it's frustrating, you know, when the Clippers came out flat this year and then... They bring on Harden and they do all this crazy shit. Well, guess what, guys? They're over 500. They're 600. They're 0. .674 right now. 31 and 15. Okay, so what? We balled out through the in-season tournament and then we landed as their plane took off and now they're in the air. So I don't know. This might. We just lost to them after beating them for the first time in like 11 years or some shit. Not 11 years, but long time. And then uh, Darvin Ham, guys, what's the what's the deal with Darvin Ham? But see, that's another thing that kind of frustrating is as a Laker fan, if we're doing good, you'll hear this little bit of I don't understand uh, the coach's decision, like in that last quarter of a game or whatever. Right now that we're not winning games, it's oh man, this coach is terrible. He's got to go, get rid of him, get somebody new. It's like wait a minute, what are you talking about, dude? He was a great coach when we won the in-season tournament. Same players. Why aren't the players playing that good, you know? And that's the frustrating thing. And that's what's hard about for me right here because I don't have anybody to argue this back and forth with. I'm just going over it with frustration. You know? I'm kidding. I'm not that mad about it. But, no, it's just one of those things, guys. So, I, as, a, uh, as a Lakers fan, I get it right now. If you're, you know, a Lakers fan, and if you're a Lakers hater, you're probably loving it. It's probably... Oh, see, this is what the Lakers always do. Um, I'm not sure about the coach. I don't know where we're going to make no mid-season coaching change. I doubt it. Uh, I don't know if that's Buss's style. We'll see what she decides. But um, as far as the Lakers, I know what they're probably going to end up doing. At least I hope they do in Laker fashion. Is you know, It's probably going to be another out of the next 10 games. Let's say we win six you know and then maybe out of the following 10 games maybe we could win like eight or something you know and we'll start to build a trend where we're moving upward just enough to get in to the first round of the postseason and then hopefully to the finals i mean but damn as a fan you want to be on top dude i want to i want to watch these uh shows that come on i want to listen to the radio in the morning and i want to hear that hype you know, I want to hear big boy, yeah, man, another Lakers win. Like, I want to hear this shit in the morning, you know, and, and hear uh, Skip Bayless over here actually have to give LeBron and them credit as opposed to right now he can just smock at it because he's he's talking, you know, as a Dallas Cowboy fan. So 
they they get it so bad that if you can find another powerhouse like like Dallas Cowboys, like a 49ers, like a you know these big name teams, you know, if if you can bash on them or you can you can see, you know, a big name like that taking a dive. Hell yeah, you're going to jump on the bandwagon and beating up on them. But as soon as they're doing good, oh no, I give him his credit. That's how that's how it is. That's how it is dealing with this stuff. But if you really enjoy the game tonight versus Boston, which I'm hoping we can win, let's see who steps up, dude. Who's going to be the big man tonight? Who's going to be the the dominating uh force factor for the Lakers tonight if there even will be one? And then um, I believe 5.30 p.m. on Saturday, um, Lakers at the Knicks. So, unfortunately, Randall is out for at least, I think, two to three games or two to three weeks. Uh, regardless, it's about the same. And uh, he has a bad shoulder. Um, I got that here in my notes. I wanted to bring that out because I'm a big Randall fan. I really, really like watching that man play. I'm... I'm Bummed that we got rid of him. He was one of those aggressive tone setters. You know what I mean? You've got your guys that can clown with you and, and can and get in your head like a Pat Beverly, you know, maybe a Draymond Green, a uh, little bit of Westbrook. He'll do that to you. But then you got these enforcers, man, and Randall's definitely one of them. So I really, really enjoy watching that dude play. Um, so check it out, guys. Lakers, Knicks. We'll see if LeBron will be back. We'll probably have another podcast out before that game so we can uh, go over and see how the turnout of the Boston game went tonight and if we got any updates on uh, the left ankle for LeBron or the hip spasms for AD and uh, if Darvin Ham has made any coaching adjustments that will maybe get a few more people to like him again. I, I know there's not, not everybody's against him. I'm sure not completely against him. I, you know, coaches coach, players play. You know, on any given night, these players could come out hyped up, well-rested, focused, and just dominate any team. Um, they don't even have to have superstars. I see it all the time. You know, the Rockets play really well. Um, you know, even Memphis Grizzlies have played okay with John Morant not being around. And then, you know, even these teams that do have a superstar, man, we have superstars, but I think they get a little bit of, uh, hey, you guys got to step it up. We're not going to do everything where, fuck it, these other Antetokounmpo's and these guys, they don't care. If the rest of the team's going to sit on their hands, they're going to still go out and get 40. You know, joke is here, fuck, I'll get 45 tonight even if we lose. You know, those are killers, dude. These guys go out and play hard basketball. So I'd like to see some more of that out of some of the Los Angeles Lakers players. We'll see how it goes. Uh, last topic I want to touch on, guys, is the uh, MGA. And what that is is the Mediocre Golf Association. And it's a league that we're in. And it's all about having a good time. And you don't have to be good at golf. In fact, if you're too good at golf, you're going to have to play with strokes, which is fine too. But if you like to come out and get after it, Men, women, all types of everybody are welcome and, and come out. Um, I'm part of the Orange County chapter. Um, that's Kenny Carlson down there. He runs that chapter. And um, I tell you what, it's been a lot of fun. I'm starting my third year with these guys. Um, last year was my first full solid year. I didn't miss any tournaments and actually went to the uh, MGA WC, which is the world championship they do every year up in Vegas. It's been going for like 20 some years, guys. Check it out. Um, but you can go on uh, to the MGA on online. Just Google your your uh, area. and Like if you're in the Inland Empire, anywhere you're at, all the states have them. All the cities um, have either... Uh, one that they drive and travel to like say you lived in um, Let's just use an example say I live here in uh, Burbank and There's the LA chapter so you might have to drive, you know down to LA MGA But then once you're uh, signed up and in with the guys you can check out all the other MGA's you can uh, watch the live leaderboard that gets updated throughout the year as you score I mean, it's it's a legit deal um, I would say I didn't look up look it up before uh, I came on but I'd say man there's probably like at least at least 10 tournaments before 
Man, there's maybe even more. We do, yeah, we do about 10 tournaments and then we do the world championship. And this was my last, uh, this was my first year, this last year, going to Vegas because the year before I had only played like the first six, seven tournaments and then I uh, took another adventure and I wasn't back for a few months. So then I did all of last year. And I tell you what, that trip to Vegas was badass. Can't wait to do it again. Um, if you suck, it's divided between the, the better players from all the MGAs across the entire country, guys. Basically, you could say the world. They come all the way from the Northern uh, Territory. Shout out Yellowknife MGA. They come all the way from up there, man. And uh, they all meet in Vegas. We all get there, you know. And if uh, I played on what's called the Born Harry, and we played over at the Red Rock Country Club, and it was absolutely a bucking blast. We got after it from the minute you get there in the morning. You get picked up on a giant tour bus at your hotel. They take you out to the country club uh, golf course where you meet all the other teams. You see all their different jerseys and stuff they're wearing um, according to which MGA they're from. And guys that know each other from past years are just getting together men and women taking shots, having drinking screwdrivers, eating breakfast burritos. That's just to get us started. There's announcements. There's everybody gives each other gifts and stuff. It's a blast, man. The whole weekend, look into it, guys. Uh, MGA WC. And if you're just getting into golf, you've never even played golf. You're just wanting to start out. It's a great thing to go to just to get to know guys. Um, They'll, they'll teach you the ropes a little bit, show you what you can and can't do, and, and it's just a good way to get involved in the golf. So again, check it out, guys. Um, um, upcoming event for the MGA, which you don't even need to be signed up for. You can actually just come out. Um, I believe you have to register online, but I don't think you have to join the MGA. I'm not 100% sure on that, because I know the first year I went, I just went as a guest. Um, so if you want to reach out, you can get a hold of somebody through the uh, OC MGA website or any uh, MGA uh, website for your local area. So just look up the list of MGAs and find out which one's closest to you. And then you can go online and, and search out how to contact them and then become a guest and go from there. And I think you guys will fucking enjoy it. It's a blast, dude. I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, let me kick this back on there we go oh yeah i absolutely love it and um you know i wouldn't have it any other way i i struggled at there for a while to make every tournament you know like i said and then i just i dedicated myself to it if that's the only golf i get to do then that's the golf i do is i'll do it with the league and uh, i have a blast i i golf with my brother-in-law and his cousin uh, who's a, like my best friend um, them two dudes we go out all the time as much as we can get out they golf a lot more than I do even which is they pretty much go every weekend and we really try to get out there and tear it up there's a lot of really good courses here in Southern California it's phenomenal we have good weather down here so it works out good for us if you live in the area you know that it's nothing new to you uh, but I'd be I'm surprised when I go out on the golf courses guys and we'll go out there and you know we get paired up with say a fourth you know so it's me my brother-in-law and his cousin and then they'll stick a single with us or maybe it's just uh, a guy and myself and then we get a, a single or another double they don't know about the mga and it blows my mind because it's like the ones that do fuck when i went to this tournament there was like I don't know. I don't even know what the final number was, but the last, it was over 300 people were going to this tournament. And it's like, holy shit, dude. You know what I mean? And then if you scored, there's a cutoff. And if you scored better, you play a different tournament while the guys who scored from the cutoff down, which is pretty much some of the harder party animals of the group, um, they go to the, the Red Rock Country Club. And man, it, it's great. So I like to always try to tell people about it. And then after I do score uh, my terrible rounds, I'll probably come back in and we'll do a podcast. And I'll have a couple of the guys on, my brother-in-law or somebody. I'll get them on the podcast, hopefully. And we'll be able to talk about our golf round and kind of do a special episode according to that. So the pod's going to go in lots of different ways, guys. You can see this is kind of how I like to do the solo pods because I can get the... Uh, information out a little faster to you guys 
you know, I can keep it at like right about an hour or under an hour. If it goes over because there's a lot of interesting things I want to talk about, then it'll go over. But um, we'll keep in uh, touch about the Super Bowl. So we'll keep talking about that and see if we hear anything interesting or any uh, predictions. We're going to keep uh, track of the Lakers here. Are we going to get to the NBA Finals? Are we going to get to the championship this year? Look, guys, the Kansas City Chiefs were playing like shit throughout this season, okay? In a lot less games, so you have a lot less opportunity, if you think about it, to get to a Super Bowl, and they made it. So by no means are the Lakers dead in the water. I just think that we need to step it up and get that killer instinct going back in us. And maybe it'll start to happen as the season gets a little bit further. I know it's the mid-season grind right now. So guys are just like really out there putting their all in. And then some of them are just kind of on cruise control. So we need to get that cleaned up. Uh, man, I can go on about the Lakers. Um, so thank you guys so much. Please go out to YouTube and uh, on YouTube and check us out, Outcast Services. We're releasing part five of the Blazer Build today on top of this podcast, so it's kind of a big day. Um, part five has been on YouTube for a couple of days, but I hadn't announced it yet, so that's available and live now. And then um, check out our YouTube shorts. We try to, every once in a while, we'll throw one on there. I have a my most viewed golf short is on there. It's got over 10,000 views. It, it's nothing special. And then I've got a, like a little barbecue one on there you could check out. Some of the uh, electrical and lighting we do and um, of course uh, focusing on our blazer and just stuff we do here in the shop um, Instagram outcast services LLC you'll check us out over there and then um, on the next episode guys we're going to be touching on our CNC machine that we have here in the shop that we are working on getting set up I have a guy who's helping me try to get some of the designs to uh, to the program so that we can get them laid out and cut and then we're going to be putting that merchandise and small keychain type stuff into the podcast and then be able to give it out to some of the followers and listeners and then um, do a whole series of videos on YouTube that involve the CNC machine and everything that it, it, it does, what it can do. We're going to incorporate it into some really cool projects and hopefully be out in, um, out in Arizona. Um, doing some welding and some custom work this summer so we'll be filming out there and uh, taking the podcast on the road and uh, that'll be a fun one because there's going to be a group of characters out there and a couple of river trips this year that'll kind of expose you to my personal life a little bit and we can keep track on all these topics so those of you that uh, find the podcast interesting it doesn't go with such a large gap between episodes because that's a bummer I have podcasts that I love and sometimes I'll put an episode out and then three weeks goes by till you get the next one and then all of a sudden they get on track and they're dropping at least one a week or two a week whatever it is and now it's a lot more entertaining so i'm going to try to keep up on it topics i talk about today i need to touch on before the next episode comes out and we'll go from there guys so thank you again thanks for tuning in